Inclusion and Leadership Council for NAWRB. And last year we announced 10 leadership principles and we've been sharing those principles and diving into those principles, unpacking them a little bit throughout the year. And now we've really started trying to add to that and give some resources. We're gonna to talk today about some books, some movies, some podcasts and things to help support leadership principle number two. And who knows what leadership principle number two is? You should all be looking. All right, good job, good job. Keep achieving. We all need to keep achieving through our lives. And I think this topic is gonna to be broadened out a little bit today. We're gonna to talk about achievement in a, in a very broad sense because certainly it has a very distinct career definition, how you achieve in career, how you achieve during your work, with your work, but it also applies to your life in general and how you achieve throughout your whole entire life, whether you're you know, 15 just starting out in life or whether you're 85 and you're on that end of the spectrum. There's achievements that can be done throughout your entire life. And I think it's important we don't lose sight of that. Um, I've got my colleagues here, Desiree, just wave hi. Teresa, wave hi, Chitra. And they can tell you a little bit more about themselves as we move along, but I'm gonna start it off here and just talk about one book that um, I love. I love this book. And uh, again, it's called Life You've Always Wanted, The Life You've Always Wanted. And it's by John Ortberg. And the reason why I wanted to start with this book is because John Ortberg is actually a minister, a Presbyterian church, but he's written a book here that I think gives you a grounding, a basis for your life. And I think in order to achieve, you need to know where you want to go and what gives you satisfaction and what you really get joy out of. Because sometimes I think people are trying to achieve so hard, they lose that joy along the way. And then they find themselves doing things that they don't even, um, they don't even really want to do, or they lose their moral compass along the way. And they start doing things that they shouldn't be doing. And so I think it's really important and critical that you ground yourself in whatever your faith, whatever your spiritual um, uh, desire is, but you need to have a grounding that helps you and really helps you find the way. I want to go back to this book a few times as we talk today, and I'm going to share some of the principles that he talks about. I'm going to start with one here, and it's called An Unhurried Life. And, you know, I try to look for silver linings and things, and um, certainly COVID has brought a share of uh, awful situations and, and, and really, really awful situations for some families, etc. But one thing I hope it's also done is make us slow down just a little bit and really look at what's important to you. How are you doing with your family, with your relationships with people? What do you do that really makes you happy? And what do you wanna be doing maybe 10 years from now, 20 years from now? Write those goals down. And then when you start thinking about achieving, it's all about morphing and transforming along the way to get you to where you wanna go. So whether you're a young mom or whether you're a career executive or whether you're a CEO, that keep achieving is really about learning and growing and making yourself better as we move forward and as, as we all move forward together. So um, again, trying to, to look for any silver linings we can these days, I think that slowing down a little bit and enjoying some of your life and really doing some introspective work to determine what you want to do is a great way to start 2022. I'm going to throw it over to Teresa for a minute because I think she's got a couple other um, area, a couple other pieces of information that she wants to share with everybody also. Go ahead, Teresa. Well, thank you so much. And what an, I absolutely, you know, I was kind of nervous when we first decided to do this based on the fact that I am not a book reader. I don't enjoy reading a book, but I absolutely have really, truly enjoyed, um, you know, this, um, you know, doing this because I think it really kind of opens up the eyes of really the, the great uh, things that we can do. If, and, and today more than ever, there are so many different vehicles, right? That we can use, whether it's podcasts, whether it's actually Netflix, you know, uh, whether it's any other form. And so for me, or Audible or Blinkist, whichever works, all of those are great vehicles for you to learn from. So for me, I love Audible and I love Blinkist because I don't have a whole lot of time, but if I could get a summary of, 
you know, what a book entails. It's an awesome, awesome way to really deep dive uh, further if you love the book. So on Audible, um, there are a couple books that I, one book that was given to me that, and to me about keeping achieving is I'm looking at it in three ways. One, books about how history, you know, how we, um, you know, move forward in history. And a lot of times when we're young, right, not that I'm not, but when we're young, we don't realize all of the important things that people did in the past to help us move forward. So I love several movies that I'm going to recommend that are also on podcasts. And one of them is called Crib Camp and it's C-R-I-P Camp. And I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's on Netflix and it's about the journey of the, uh, the movement for the rights uh, for handicapped, for individuals with disabilities. So the Disabilities Act, how there was a camp that was in New York, uh, that was in near Woodstock, that was run by hippies. Now today that camp would have been outlawed because of all the things that they did uh, to help empower people that had disabilities at the time, and they were the ignored people. They were blind to everyone else. Nobody paid attention to them. But this camp that pulled together these individuals that were in some areas very disabled to mild, different levels created with these young people. And it was like a summer camp where they would go for summer camp and these um, individuals that were running the camp all were young themselves. Uh, let these people actually do whatever they wanted and they perform like they could play softball and I mean everything that people normally would not allow them to do right that was not the norm so they felt empowered and out of that camp became that came out uh, five leaders that actually passed laws that are today in place and so because think about that that how how what a big impact that had in the 60s that the people that attended that camp, five of them and more are now civil, you know, social activists, huge, huge in the industry. So I thought that was one that I really enjoyed. The other one that I liked, because again, the three areas, right, is how do we improve ourselves, right? How do we, what types of things are we holding ourselves back? And I was actually given this book and I read, it's called Stop Apologizing. Um, you know, don't, uh, and well, it made me make sure I have the right name of the book. Sorry about that. It's um, Girl Stop Apologizing. And it's an amazing book about, you know, the reasons that we constantly look at trying to fit in and trying to please men or as women, right? Uh, and the, the uh, unconscious uh, situations and scenarios that we are in uh, that don't allow us to achieve our best life. And so that book really helps in focusing on that. And then the last one is really on books that kind of uh, help you with future, right, opportunities. And the one that I really like that also helps quite is Atomic Habits. And so that book is really about habits that you can form that help you achieve and that set you in the right place so that you're able to set goals and actually work with those goals and within those, um, within uh, achieving your goals, no matter where you are in life. So those are uh, three areas, three books, three things that I think are really important to mention today uh, that I feel uh, are very worthwhile in our Keep Achieving. Uh, oh, that's excellent, Teresa. Thank you so much. You know, um, that Crip Camp sounds really interesting. And I, I think sometimes you know, people are look for perfection. And when things begin, it's messy. Many times it's messy because we don't have all the information. We don't know how to do it, but somebody tries, right? And somebody starts and then it gets better and better. And we can continue again, improving things, right? And that's a great example. Of From people the who- minute you watch that movie, it starts with there's something happening here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it isn't exactly clear, and the moon is set, and it's- you realize the impact that one this group of people could make for a generation to improve the quality of life. 
for all. I mean, so, so many I'm things, have, so many things have gotten, so many movements have gotten started that way, right? With one person taking that first step. I think that's fantastic. Um, and, and again, you know, all, all the different types of books that are out there about improving yourself, whether that's making better habits or whether that's stop apologizing. Yeah, it, that's, that's something I hear from women in the workplace continuously. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Men don't say they're sorry. So anyways, that's a whole topic in and of itself right there. But, can, can, um, I are, can I jump in? Can I jump in? Great suggestions. Quick, yes, please, Desiree, jump in. Sorry about that. For Teresa's comment about, think about psychedelics. I think good. about you when you said, well, they want to prove everything. Here we are. We're now having legislation and people having a movement about psychedelics for the very instance of what you're saying, of allowing the children to be empowered to do whatever they want. And that was the movement in the 60s is the hip, quote, hippie days is to just be. And here we are, what are we, 60 years later? <laughs> Just saying. It's amazing. It is amazing how things change and, and with knowledge, right? As we gain more and more knowledge, we can do things better and better. Um, I'm going to, before I go to Chitra, I'm going to talk about one more thing from my little book here. And um, it talks about the practice of celebration. And I want to throw this in because I am a firm believer, you know, I worked 28 years at UPS and people always laughed because they said, Kelly will find something to celebrate. And I'm absolutely <laughs> going to always find something to celebrate because rather than crying about things, I like to laugh. And I think laughter is the best medicine. So we would find small little achievements along the way. And I encourage you as you keep achieving, even if it's a small change, and it's a good change, celebrate it and find some friends that you can celebrate with. Uh, it's, it's the best thing uh, all around. So I'm gonna turn it over to Chitra. Chitra, you wanna chime in a little bit? Sure, and it was so funny. Teresa, before she introduced the book about Stop Apologizing, she said, I'm sorry. I hope she did it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> you caught it, you caught it. <laughs> So well done, <laughs> Teresa. What Teresa laid out is actually a fantastic segue into what I wanted to share. So um, as we embarked on this, uh, uh, this mode of sharing books, particularly about keep achieving, one thing about keep achieving is, is all about uh, in recognizing the humility, right? That we do not know everything and we have to continuously uh, keep on learning uh, to, in order to continuously improve. So I went back to the core of it and I started thinking, so what is one book that has uh, shaped my thoughts and uh, influenced my uh, choice of problems that I uh, always worked on? And uh, I went back to this book that the title may be a little scare, you know, uh, scary, but I, I want you to pay attention to the second part of the title. The book is called, my, this is a book I always go back to, is the art of doing science and engineering, learning to learn. So uh, forget about the first part, but it's really, I felt, I mean, I always go back to this book or, you know, there are always some books that we read 40 times, 50 times, and you, when you pick it up, uh, you, you find new things, you discern new things, you take away um, uh, different ideas from them because you're looking at them through a lens of different life experiences. So this is a book by Richard Hamming. Uh, he's a very well-known American mathematician. Um, so I, I do it electronically, so I don't want to now start, stop share, you know, sharing, but you can find it very easily. It's such a unique title, the art, the art of doing science and engineering. I hope you noticed all the little <laughs> uh, yes. nuances there. <laughs> learning to learn. So, it's, uh, um, so uh, what this book is really all about is uh, Richard Hamming, while being uh, an incredible mathematician and shaped the foundation of computer science, uh, he also went about formulating a theory of what makes great leaders happen. What is the, you know, so he came up with this theory of how great minds work. And that's what he set about sharing in this book in a very accessible manner. Uh, in, uh, so there are a lot of stories and a lot of uh, quotable quotes from this. Um, in relation to our topic, uh, uh, keep on achieving, there are three things that would uh, jump out of this book as you read through this. 
the first and uh, the first point which has shaped my life uh, throughout is this um, uh, amazing his amazing way of striking the importance of doing working on really meaningful things he calls he says it this way so i want to i want to be able to quote it if you do not work on important problems it's unlikely you will do important work so um that goes to say so as we keep on achieving uh, what keeps us going is this ability to be excited about something larger than our lives something meaningful to the bigger society and the community we live on so an important element to continuously learn and uh, make contributions vital contributions to the community is to be able to um, identify the problem the important problem that uh, uh, you know each of us we all have different passion but still being able to identify that important problem he goes on to sharing this uh, very nice story so uh, there is a group of people working on a uh, 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 i'm going to say working on a on a building um and they are being interviewed one person says oh i am a stone layer so i am making stones to lay the stones here and the other person who is working on different part of the building says oh i am making i am an uh, artist i am making a gargoyle i'm uh, sculpting a gargoyle and uh, there is a woman who is sweeping the floor of the building as things are you know in disarray and uh, when she is asked what she was doing she says i'm helping to build a cathedral so that is the difference between how we relate to <clears throat> what we are doing to the bigger picture in the important problem it, so while we may be doing while we may be accomplishing small things small or big in our own way how does it relate to the bigger picture to the important problem so i really like the uh, the way um, he talks about you know if you do not work on important problems it's unlikely you will do important work so that's uh, awesome chitra yeah that, you know that sounds like such an interesting book um i always heard this story about uh john f kennedy visiting you know the houston site i think it was where they were trying to put the man on the moon and he ended up walking down and he met a janitor and he saw that janitor and he said well what are you doing and he looked at him and he said i'm helping to put the man on the moon <laughs> and you know that's I, it, you really need to look at what you're doing sometimes in a broad context i mean i i truly believe the people at ups they enable global commerce there is nothing more important at times than enabling global commerce and people say well don't you just move boxes no that's not what we do we enable global commerce so i mean you got to have that vision and i think that's so important um i'm going to go back to my book again another principle he talks about is the the art of um servant leadership as well and bringing that team together and getting that entire team interested and in knowing what the goal is and helping that team achieve it that's mm -hmm. true leadership so i think you hit it right on the nose chitra you know if you don't work on important problems, you won't do important work. I like that. I like that. Desiree, I'm going to throw it over to you for a little bit here as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, exciting stuff. And 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 Chitra, I got to say, every time you speak, I love the way I can see the engines going 50 million miles an hour of how you formulate every word and think about it and analyze it. It's just incredible. So thank you. Um, so I'd like to take a moment, if you don't mind, Kelly, to talk about the principles, when we started these principles and we took several months to curate them and it happened right before the pandemic, you think about Acknowledge Trailblazers, which we did which we did last month. And then this one's Keep Achieving and Believe. And we made it purposely, we put it together in an order that you would see how the migration as we went through, if you look at the 12 principles that are out there. And the ideology is, is that when we, I did the one on I Love Lucy last month about um, Lucy Arnaz, about, you know, her, her strengths and, and everything she's going. Here we are, the movie came out with um, Nicole Kidman on it, and we've been seeing all these new things coming out, and I've been texting back and forth with Kelly about, oh my gosh, because everything that, and Kelly's like, oh my god, I already read that article, okay, great, great, great. <laughs> so that's all cool, but what happened was, um, is, is that they started drilling, the fact is that here we are about what about happened to Luce, Lucille is, is, uh, is, is that she became, or Lucy, is that she became 
um, the first, you know, part of the movie studio, she was the first one to break all the stuff and show her marriage with her husband and her and play it out on stage, which would never have happened had she not been the forceful of that acknowledged trailblazer. The reason I bring it up is the fact is, is that Nicole Kidman was not the first choice. Um, our, uh, uh, Kate Blanchett, I think it was, is a woman who was, and they started really saying, oh, well, they were so disappointed because the daughter, uh, that fact that she didn't play. So then they start attacking Nicole about the fact of her husband, of her ex-husband, of Tom Cruise, of how that played in there. And that dynamic just really changed on how she had to really change the narrative on the media attacking and you keep achieving going into that point is what I wanted to say is that here, Nicole Kidman has how many awards and how many superstars? And they were addressing her as, as she wasn't the first choice. And so now I'm gonna come and attack you based on the relationship of what um, um, uh, Lucille had with her husband. You know, that kind of scenario, it really kept me in the focus of women always have to keep achieving. So I wanted to highlight that and how it really brought me to think about, we took so much time to make sure that the principles were in order and you have to acknowledge a trailblazer. You have to keep achieving to be a trailblazer. You have to believe in yourself as we went through it. So I just wanted to highlight that. I thought it was very powerful. Well, like um, the name that Chitra came out and said, well, don't think about the first part of the story um, about the name. So um, I am like Teresa. I don't read books. I'm very bad about reading books. I le read a lot of little, which is a lot of different verticals, which means a lot of different industries versus then reading a whole book. Um, it keeps me abreast because I love to be shock treatment versus then the depthness of it goes down. So mine is if you don't have big breasts, put ribbons on your pigtails and other lessons learned by your mother. And this is by Barbara Cochran. And the reason is, is that if you think about, you know, us as women, our looks always, you have to be balanced, you know, big hair back in the day in the 60s and 70s, you know, the fair faucet, you know, crazy, um, you know, how you have to be balanced, how you look, how you present and that keep achieving thing. So the reason I brought up Barbara Cochran is, she is very different. Um, she has very different ideologies than a lot of people, but she's 70 plus years old. She keeps her reinventing herself. You know, the fact is like her and Dottie Herman, they started with a thousand dollars. They built these real estate mogul, you know, companies that are out there. You know, Dottie um, had a thousand dollars from her bank account. You know, Barbara um, um, you know, borrowed a thousand dollars from her boyfriend. Um, they have different ideologies, how they went to build their mega superstar real estate. And this is being real estate focused or finance in the housing ecosystem. But the point that I wanted to highlight about Barbara is, is that when I did her She Centerfold and I met her in person and we spent a whole day together at the White House about having the biggest and largest constituents there initiating about a bill to get women to have a seat and all that stuff. We were there. Nellie Galan, which I know Teresa knows very well. Nellie Galan, Barbara Cochran, myself, and several other 300 women were there really powerfully making sure that we could get all these initiatives uh, approved. And we were the biggest uh, audience ever to approve at any hearing at the Senate. And the reason I think that is so powerful is that at that time, I sat down and I said, Barbara, I want to do a She Centerfold on you. And the amount of conversation that we had as we go through, which is part of our magazine, and that's why I thought the book was so important, is that every single chapter is about her story of her different phases of what she went through and her less lessons learned because we all make mistakes we all have to pick ourselves up we always have to keep achieving get knocked off and when she got this very successful shark tank um position she was not first choice her actually the hairstylist at the shark tank show is the one who recommended Barbara would come in and be one that they could fill because they wanted to have more women on the show. So through that process, my point that I'm saying from keep achieving is, as you pointed out very eloquently, calm down, you know, be, live the journey. Well, she lived the journey through her relationship, her friends, making sure that she always had the best heart to help what her ideology is because we all have differences you know we all have different ways of i don't like the way she does it. i do like the way he does it i don't like the way you know he does it but i love the way she does it so we all have different ways of doing things and presenting and communicating but the point is it got her to able to go through and if you think about it she's helping the founders what shark tank is about helping small scale businesses to grow to scale to go and that ties back to the point is is that she 
she jumped into a bathtub during the pandemic at 70 years old and started scrubbing a bathtub on TikTok to show how you clean a bathtub in a t-shirt that she had worn that someone had sent her that cost 10 bucks showing that you just normal, who doesn't matter who you are, that you're never too big to get into a bathtub to clean it. She literally jumped in a bathtub and scoured it all. Like I said. So the point that I'm trying to impress here is when you keep achieving, it doesn't mean that you have to go up a scale and get higher up the pole to become this executive executive as owners, but keep achieving means you keep having that quality of life and keep living to continue to grow, to go with it. And so that was my point that I thought from a perspective of a person that's a woman um, that I really loved. And when I saw the title and I, and I read some of it, I went, okay, well, this is kind of balancing the look and, and the whole mythology to go with it. So that's my share. It's awesome. You know, Barbara Cochran, I think, yeah, so many of us have seen her on Shark Tank and um, I didn't recognize that last name at first, but she is certainly, <laughs> certainly a trailblazer. And uh, that's, that's a very, a, a great story. And her book sounds really interesting. I'm going to, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to share something. So what we did type, what happened from last book so Kelly, Kelly, our host, actually came, had a book and Tammy Bunnell, unfortunately, could not make it the last minute. She had a flight cancellation and had it rearranged and stuff, but she actually went out and bought 50 books of the recommendation that Kelly had and sent it out to her team so they would read. This is the power, which I made a joke with my husband last night. I said, I have to bring a book report tomorrow. Oh my God, I better study all night to figure out what my book report is going to be so I can present it tomorrow. So you're forcing this whole program of us to re in, in, to not only reinvent, to go back and read the books that I can't remember. I think it was you said, Kelly, 40, 50 times to read that same book or it was Tari uh, Chitra, that to re go back to go to see what is making us learn to continue to keep achieving. So I just want to share that about Tammy. I thought oh, it was fantastic. Thank you. thank you very much. You know, um, that book, Multipliers, I'm telling you, I recommend it highly. It is a great book. And even though Tammy's not here, she did recommend a book. She um, recommended a book called Do the Work, easy title. And it's a book by Stephen Pressfield. And it's about projects and getting a project completed from beginning to end. And if Tammy recommends it, I am confident that it is go very, going to be a very, very good book. And it's, it's really about, again, the resistance that you run into at, from the beginning when people say, oh, there's no possible way you can do it to the midpoint where you're like, oh my gosh, I can't do it. And then to the end. So I highly, highly encourage you to read that book too. Do the work. All right. I'm going to go back to my book one more time here because I do think it's a great book. This book goes a lot through balance and it talks about a balanced life. And I want to share my thoughts on that because through the years, um, you know, I mentored a lot of women through the years in a very male dominated industry. And we would talk about balance and women seem to talk about it more than men, um, probably because we have so many things going on in our lives at all times. And um, not that men don't, but they compartmentalize a little bit more. We tend to blur the lines and, and that's how life is. It's a bunch of blurry lines sometimes, but women would come in and they would go like this. I need balance. I'm trying to balance. And I would always tell them, it's not about this. It's not a scale. It's really more about this like a roller coaster, because there are times when you're going to need to give 24 hours a day to whatever it is you love that you're doing, right? If you're running an organization, if you're creating or developing a new product, whatever the case may be, um, you're, you're way up here 24 hours a day, but then you need to take some time back and you need to be with your family and you need to raise your children and you take care of your parents. There's things you need to do. And then you'll rise up again and you'll say, okay, I'm ready now, but you need kind of refuel. And that's, that's kind of life. And I always throw that out because I think so many times it's never going to be 50, 50. It's always going to be like, Oh, Oh, it's going to move. And we shouldn't feel bad about that. We should come to enjoy it. And we should come to relish those times, those times when you're in over your head and inundated with work. And then those times when you can take a little time back, right. And spend it with your kids and raise that family and do it and do it the way that works best for you. So again, Highly recommend this. I want to add one more thing. Um, and then I'm going to go around to um, podcasts. Okay, Teresa, I'm with you. I love podcasts too. And there is a podcast and I may have mentioned this before, but I'm going to probably mention it every time. There's a guy named Malcolm Gladwell. Anybody know Malcolm Gladwell? He's written 
a plethora of books, you know, um, The Outlier is one of the big ones, David versus Goliath, another one. He does a podcast called Revisionist History. I am not kidding. It talks about history in a way that it brings up stories I never knew, I never learned. You know, um, many of them from a minority viewpoint, whether that's women, other minorities out there, et cetera. But bits and pieces of history, I'm telling you, if you haven't listened to it, just listen to one and you'll be hooked. You'll be hooked. They are fantastic. So with that, I'm going to go around and just go backwards here a little bit. Desiree, what other thoughts do you have today on Keep Achieving? I think, you know, Barbara Cochran in her book had a great story. It said, without a clear plan, you won't know where you're going and you'll have little chance of getting there. And I find myself in 2022, um, I made a purpose point that we could all sit there and live in this unknown and this gray matter that we're dealing with. But the bottom line is, is that turn the dial, click and move forward with that goal. You can still turn the dial again, but have a clear focus. And I've got to say personally, I've never been more sure on how I'm going to move forward and it's not that I'm not gonna have bumps in the road, but I'm very structured and go with it. And so to that point, I think it really highlights it. Um, and I believe that, you know, we can all make, you know, I'm not gonna say excuses, but, you know, put things out, why, where, how. We have to have a clear definition and say, you know what, it was more important for my family to do this, which I've never done in my four in my life. But back in 2019, when I had, you know, two people in my immediate family pass away, and then my husband had a stroke, I realized that you have to just be and take moment for yourself. And it is what it is. And if people don't tribe around you that things happen, then they're not your friend to go forward. So that keep achieving point to myself was be focused. And yet at the same time, you have to put the family first and not work your tail off the entire time. So that was your perfect balance to your, your um, comment that life won't be always balanced. But the point is, is you go up and down that roller coaster and make sure it gets done. So um, I'd like to address one other thing too, though, on that aspect. So this year for us, you know, I keep achieving. I've never been more excited to host another conference um, because of the power of people I've met, the power of getting back together, but also it's the ideologies of changes has happened here. I'm like down, whatever we need to do to conquer that, to make it happen. I'm just like, we're, we're here and figure out the logistics. It's the old adage we used to say, get it, get it done. And we'll figure out the pieces as we go. And so I, I have that mo the momentum just to be put that out there. But the second thing you talked about a podcast, I love um, when the first time I heard this person's voice and then I read up on him and as much as I can, which is not as much as I like, I love Jay Shetty. Jay Shetty is a, he has the one that's called the number, uh, it's a podcast in the world about, um, he's got millions and millions and millions, what is he, 28 million followers are right now. Um, but the idea is, is that he is someone who has a very calming voice, has a very way of, of expressing things that makes you think without being someone who is, you know, the, the person who just in your face, I, as soon as someone gets too vocalized and too wild and too energized with me, I just shut them out. I, I don't listen. I turn them off. And Jay has this calming voice. He has the same name as my husband, but that's beside the point. Um, <laughs> he has this, this warmth about him. Never met the man before, like I said. And I just want to, I listen to him. I'm like, he sets me in this calmness of my life. So I just thought I'd share that podcast, but I think he's really cool. And he's on Facebook. He's on all the different platforms, but I just think he's a really cool guy. It's awesome, Desiree. You know, there's an old saying, you know, uh, uh, fail to plan is a plan to fail. And I think planning, you mentioned it briefly there and just keeping yourself moving forward is such a critical piece too. And again, providing yourselves those, um, those breaks. The one thing we never plan our breaks, you know, lunch or even just a break for family for a while or whatever it is. So great point. Um, Teresa, how about you? Well, first of all, I couldn't agree more about the book with Barbara Cochran. And I totally am so impressed, Desiree, the fact that you're right, keep achieving and she's constantly achieving. So I thought that was 
something that was eye-opening, right? That we constantly have to be achieving no matter what your age, right? There's always something you can learn, something you can improve upon, something that you can achieve. Um, and I think that is a great lesson for all of us. Um, podcasts, I love, there's several. There's, I really like Hoda Kotb. Now, uh, Hoda Kotb is, you know, for those who are not familiar with her, she does NBC uh, Today Show. She's got the fourth hour with Jenna Bush Hager. And I love uh, the, her, her just, I never get a chance because obviously I'm working, right? To watch it. So now I love the fact that she's got this podcast where she interviews women. She interviews uh, celebrities. She interviews people that are making a difference. So different individuals and the podcast covers all scopes. And I really like uh, a lot of what she says and just her personality and the fact that she's not just interviewing people that are uh, well-known, but people that are making a difference in the world. So I love that. So that's one that I definitely highly recommend. Um, Who doesn't love Hoda? Are you kidding me? Right. She's like Absolutely. the most lovable one and she makes great points. She's amazing. And if you do love her, you will also love Jenna Bush Hager and oh, yes. she does a phenomenal, I know for those that are readers, she does her book club and recommends a lot of great books and podcasts as well. So uh, I follow her as well. Oh, that's so cool, Teresa. Yeah, great points, great points. Chitra, how about you? I'm going to wrap it up with uh, continuing the theme of working on important problems. So if you start thinking about, so all of us have this vision of contributing meaningfully to a uh, lot of big problems that are out there, but what separates the one who go after uh, doing that and not going after that is courage. And going back to the book again, Richard Hamming's book, very interestingly, he frames courage as confidence in oneself. It's not some courage is some uh, some trait or uh, uh, characteristic, something either we need, we are born with or not, but really reframing it as, I, I found it very fascinating that he reframes it as confidence in oneself. So if you are confident, you have this amazing, you know this is an important problem. It wants to be solved. It is going to have impact for the entire humanity, but to be able to step up to it is what stops us is not having the confidence in oneself. So he talks about, so he has very interesting uh, um, uh, examples of how he observed, uh, uh, how you can, how can you develop confidence in oneself when, when we are um, stymied by all the challenges and the barriers, right? Our first thought goes to what are all the things that are in our way rather than how do we overcome them? He talks about mimicking or imitating the style of someone whom you feel, you look around and say, so calm, such a confident person. So, and he did that. He copied the style of someone else, some other scientist he admired and how it became, uh, it reinforced uh, confidence in himself. So in order to keep achieving, um, instead of stopping, is to find a problem of passion, problem of importance, magnitude. So it is that, that keeps you uh, wanting to improve yourself and continuing to learn. And part of continuing the journey is this confidence uh, in, in oneself. So I'm going to end with this quote because he has some amazing, uh, you know, quotable quotes. He talks about this. Where, what you learn from others, you can use to follow. What you learn for yourself, you can use to lead. So... So I'm going to start with that. So it's confidence and important problems, all of this keeping on achieving is about learning for oneself. And by learning for oneself, we are then equipped with the amazing um, uh, skill to lead others. That's a great point, Chitra, and great quote too. You know, um, it, it is interesting. Sometimes problems can seem overwhelming. You know, you can look at a problem like homelessness, right? Or you can look at preschool education, or you can look at uh, real estate and how do we get home ownership um, more diversified, let's just say. There's so many big problems. And then you can look at things like, I'm trying to raise two little tiny humans and I'm trying to do it the right way. I'm trying to lead in my church. I'm trying to do, there are so many ways to keep achieving. And I wanna keep the topic broad because I don't want people hemmed in by, I guess, thoughts about what it has to look like. 
I yeah. want people to develop it for themselves. And I think it is so important because all those quotes, Chitra, and all those podcasts, Teresa, and Desiree, everything, you look at Lucille Ball. Are you kidding me? Talk about trailblazing. <laughs> oh my gosh. But you can look at, you know, um, leaders of all types, Condoleezza Rice, right? You can look at uh, Colin Powell. There are so many leaders out there who hit wall after wall after wall and couldn't get very far. And then, you know, again, you can look at moms out there who are just trying to raise some tiny humans and make sure those tiny humans are doing okay. So uh, anyways, I think this has been a great discussion. I truly appreciate everything you guys have brought to the table and all the insights you've given us from the books and the podcasts that you've been engaged with. And, you know, I think getting that out to everybody and sharing those resources is so important. Uh, Desiree, I'm gonna turn it over to you for our last few closing comments. Absolutely. So thank you. So thank you very much for hosting this. And, and I think the thing is, is that you said, let's, let's keep it broad. UPS is part of the ecosystem because guess what? You provide the quality of life because without those packages, we couldn't live of everything we do, whether you're moving the people, whether you're moving the boxes, whether you're delivering, you know, you brought up a subject matter. Um, it was either last podcast, the one before or our session about we have to supply the um, uh, machinery and the tools to the natural disasters to make sure it's not about providing the, the food and the, and the supplies to the people, but we got to keep the equipment moving and working to operate to actually help within the natural disasters. And every day we hear of another natural disaster somewhere in the United States. So that impact when we don't think of, we think of, like you said, moving brown boxes is all we're doing. No, you're keeping the the quality of life and the and the ability to have the real estate to help the homeless to help all the people do their job by the delivery of what ups does so thank you for that and that's the sharing so that's why i absolutely love these the series and thank you Teresa, for thinking this up about the principles um and and chitra and everyone else on the council for your thoughts and and your contributions because the whole chorus is that um, continuing this story, it makes me continue to learn. And to close out with Chitra's comment, you know, your quote was so hit me so hard because that's exactly what I do. I used to go to every single major high end conference that of expertise level high end to make sure that I could tap into what they were saying, take a six on six course, you know, like college 101, 606, take that information back for me so I could help lead in connecting the ecosystem together and then have people like you who are the experts in those verticals be the follow-up and be the people so I can connect the dots because I'm a great connector, but to know that knowledge down deep, that's why you're here. And that's the power of, oh, unbelievable. So thank you very much. Um, we are going to, and, and hopefully we can create a better earth and a better climate and put everything that goes with it. So next month, we are going to have the next principle and that is going to be, as my computer loads, it is going to be, and I'm not going to say anything else, believe whatever the mind can conceive, it can achieve. And that, Teresa, is you, girl. That's right. Um, it is. <laughs> so what color are we going to wear? So we can get that out now versus an ink. Because if you notice, every time we have a different color palette, we have white today. So what do you want to have as your color palette, girl? Oh, I love the color purple. So any, you know, range of the color purple. Awesome. There you go. Awesome. February 3rd, we'll see you all. Stay healthy, stay happy. And we're always here for you. So I'm Desiree Patton, the chairman of this incredible council. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything you do. It makes me energized for the rest of the day. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, everyone, for your valuable time and your contributions. And we'll see you next month. Everyone, have a great one. This will be on YouTube and, and all the different platforms. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. Happy New Year.